Kenneth Carroll Gwynn was born August 24, 1936, in Garland, Arkansas, the son of migrant fruit pickers who moved to Nevada from the San Joaquin Valley in California. He attended almost 30 schools during his childhood. Education was something Kenny Gwynn always knew he would pursue. Coming from a meager background, athletics and teaching paved the way to his college education. Governor Gwynn attended California's Fresno State College, where he was named the most valuable player for both football and basketball. Well, I'd say the only thing he really talked about in his youth was football. I mean, he had a passion for football. He obviously went to USC and then transferred to Fresno State and had quite a career as a football player. And that's, that's kind of where the story starts if you started talking to him. After graduation, he worked in education and became the superintendent of Clark County School District. Kenny Gwynn was the youngest superintendent of schools in a major school district in the United States. And that's really where he got his start in this community um, and, and where he, he made a name for himself. He did such a fantastic job and that really propelled him into his banking career and then his utility career and such. In 1979, Governor Gwynn was honored to have a junior high school named after him. He was full of energy, enthusiasm, and teachers loved him. When they were dedicating Kenny Gwynn Junior High School and he was backstage waiting to get announced uh, and come out and give a speech, there was a, a young elementary school or middle school student standing next to him and he looked up at him and he said, right before Kenny went on stage and he said, hey, I just want to thank your mom for naming you after our school. <laughs> Governor Gwynn served as chairman of the board and chief executive officer of Southwest Gas. Jumping from a budget of Southwest Gas to a budget of uh, the state of Nevada came pretty easy for him because he had a finance background. So I think his time at CEO, uh, as CEO of Southwest Gas was a great training ground for, for being a governor that really focused on the budget. In 1994, Governor Gwynn served as acting president at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. His tenure lasted one year. During that time, he balanced the university's budget despite inheriting a $10 million deficit. Um, but I think also his tenure, even though it was short as president of UNLV, came in a very uh, turbulent time at that university. And, and if you remember, he, he donated his entire salary except for $1 to, uh, to female athletics. Um, and, and just bridging that gap and healing that community um, and the job that he did, I think he, he was very proud of that too. He was elected governor of Nevada in 1999 after a successful career in education and business. He had promised uh, Dima that until he had his family obligations and his financial obligations taken care of, his kids were you know, in or out of college and on their way uh, to building their own families and that you know, he was financially stable, he would never run. And when those things happened, uh, he decided to run for governor, and when he was in, man, he was, he was a force. When Governor Gwynn took over, um, you know, Nevada was going through some incredible growing pains. Um, you know, we were having uh, 30 and 35,000 new kids a year showing up for elementary school, and, and everything was busting at the seams, and we went from uh, a million in population to two million population almost overnight. And so that just taxed everything, every imaginable point of infrastructure in government, whether it was education or healthcare or public safety. And, and so it was a very difficult time uh, to manage that. And unfortunately, one of the byproducts of that is we ended up, as people like to say, at the, at the bottom of every good list and, and, and not at the top of any list you want to be at the top of. And, and so I think he, wore that as a personal challenge, that he wanted to move the needle on education, he wanted to move the needle on healthcare. And, and Kenny Gwynn came from very meager means, and so he always was a champion for the underdog. I mean, he cared a lot more about the guy that carried a lunch pail than a guy that wore a three-piece suit. And uh, he cared a lot about people that, that didn't have the means to care for themselves. He reached out to people, he cared, um, and it didn't matter what walk of life they came from. It wasn't about what they were, it was who they were. Governor Gwynn led Nevada through the turbulent times after the September 11th attacks. You know, 9-11 happened while he was governor. 
and uh, that was a particularly troubling time. Um, I don't think anybody has to be reminded of the devastating effects it had on Las Vegas, especially, but, but our economy um, statewide. And that really ate it at, at, at Kenny. And, um, and, you know, he felt, I think, helpless uh, a, a lot of the time. But he just worked harder. I mean, he just came in earlier and he left later. And I remember the night that he gave the speech for uh, you know, our, our response to 9-11. And uh, it was probably the most somber I'd ever seen him. And uh, he could be very lighthearted. He could be very jovial. But when the times dictated seriousness, he was very serious. And I think that was probably one of the bigger challenges of his governorship. And, um, you know, not just him, a lot of the business leaders in this community, um, in, on the Las Vegas Strip, uh, Reno, uh, came together and really, uh, this is a, a great testament to the business community of the state of Nevada, is that people came together, worked hard, and we got through it. Governor Gwynn wanted to shape future generations by providing opportunities for higher education. Many would say his lasting legacy is the Millennium Scholarship. I mean, we had just uh, had the settlement of the big uh, tobacco uh, uh, settlement, and that money, which was, you know, tens of millions of dollars, was adequate to start a scholarship program just like that. And uh, so we took it to the governor, um, named it the Millennium Scholarship because it was kicking off just after 2000. And uh, he loved it, and there couldn't have been a better salesman for the Millennium Scholarship, and, and that's such a big part of his legacy and such a big part of him being an education governor. Uh, I don't think there's anything in this world that uh, Governor Gwynn, uh, Dima Gwynn, or any of the people that work for him could be proud of. Time Magazine named Governor Gwynn one of the five best governors in the country. But the greatest thing about Kenny Gwynn as a candidate or as a governor or as a husband, father, and any, any of the the roles that he has played or played in his life is he's just a real guy. You know, he was just, he was fun to be around. Um, he was caring and considerate, tough when he had to be, uh, smart on the issues. And uh, he, he was just a great role model, a great mentor. He just did things right. To describe Governor Kenny Gwynn in a few words. A deeply caring man, because Kenny Gwynn's a legend. And, and every part of his life before he became governor and, and while he was governor and after he was governor uh, made him a legend. And people in this state won't soon forget him. And uh, so I, I'm so happy that he's receiving this honor tonight. Um, obviously, I wish he was here to accept it in person. But um, you know, Kenny Gwynn will never go away. He's, uh, he, he changed the fabric of this state and he's gonna take a very deserved uh, role as a, as a legend. And uh, we'll be talking about him, my grandkids will be talking about him, and their grandkids will be talking about him.